All right, in this scene over here, we're going to talk about the pentose phosphate pathway. And we're going to make it a lot of fun and really easy. So let's begin. Before we talk about anything else, we notice that it says cytoplasm in the sky over here. This reminds us that we're in the cytoplasm, as the pentose phosphate pathway occurs exclusively in the cytoplasm. Now there are various characters over here that are very happy. Here we see the liver, the red blood cell, and the adrenal cortex. This reminds us that the pentose phosphate pathway occurs in liver cells, red blood cells, and in the cells of the adrenal cortex. Another site where we're going to find the pentose phosphate pathway is in lactating mammary glands. We didn't put this in the scene in order to keep it most clean. But as we'll see soon, it's quite logical why the pentose phosphate pathway occurs in lactating mammary glands. Alright now, let's get to the pathway. Here we see the irreversible, or the oxidative stage of the pentose phosphate pathway. Then, we're going to get to the reversible stage, or the non-oxidative phase. Through this crazy scene, we're going to remember the steps and enzymes involved of the pentose phosphate pathway. Before we get to each individual step, let's just have an overview. What's the pentose phosphate pathway for? Well, it's to produce two things, NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate. NADPH is produced during the first, the irreversible phase, whereas ribose 5-phosphate is produced during the second, the reversible phase. NADPH, of course, is used for fatty acid synthesis, for steroid synthesis, and to prevent oxidative stress. Ribose 5-phosphate is used to make pyrimidines and purines, which are then used to make DNA and RNA. So if there's anything that you remember from this video, it should be that the pentose phosphate pathway is used to produce NADPH as well as ribose 5-phosphate. NADPH is produced during the first phase, and ribose 5-phosphate is produced during the second phase. Alright, let's get to each individual step. It all begins with this guy over here. This guy's name is glucose 6-phosphate. We can see over here the glucose 6-carbon sugar ring, and the phosphate. So this is glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose 6-phosphate is the starting point of the pentose phosphate pathway. Glucose 6-phosphate, you may recall, is produced in the early step of glycolysis. So this substrate over here can be shunted away from glycolysis to the pentose phosphate pathway. For example, if the cell needs NADPH. Now the glucose 6-phosphate guy wasn't happy with himself. He didn't like being a glucose molecule. So he decided to undergo surgery and he converted himself into an ape. But not any ape, an ape with a fossil glued to it. This fossil actually looks like the number six. So this is the six fossil glued to the ape. Six fossil glued to the ape for six phosphogluconate. The first step of the pentose phosphate pathway is when glucose six phosphate is converted to six phosphogluconate. There's actually an intermediate here called six phosphogluconolactone. But since this is not so important for us, we're not going to discuss it here. Now, you may notice over here that on the arrow it says G6PD, and this stands for glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, and that makes sense. Glucose 6-phosphate undergoes this reaction through the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. And by the way, this is the rate-limiting step of the reaction. Now, when glucose 6-phosphate was converted to 6-phosphogluconate, NAD plus was reduced to NADPH. Let's move on to the next step. Now the 6-phosyl ape wasn't happy with himself either. He probably felt like the fossil on his shoulder was really bothering him. He realized that he would rather be a TV show, perhaps the family guy, and specifically Lois. But he wanted her to have a ruby complexion, so he converted himself into the Ruby Lois show. Ruby Lois for ribulose. Ribulose 5-phosphate. So again, 6-phosphogluconate is converted to ribulose 5-phosphate. And again, NAD plus is reduced to NADPH in this step. Alright, so that's it for the irreversible oxidative phase. Let's move on now to the reversible non-oxidative phase. So the Ruby Lois show fell down through the ice over here and turned into rye bread. The rye bread over here reminds us of ribose, and it actually has five compartments to remind us of five. So the rye bread with the five for ribose 5, ribose 5 phosphate. So the next step of the pentose phosphate pathway is when Ruby Lois for ribulose is converted to ribose 5 phosphate. And you may have noticed that the arrow over here is made of ice, which reminds us of isomerase, as the enzyme involved in this conversion is an isomerase. Now, by the way, I didn't mention that ribulose 5-phosphate over here could actually be converted to xylulose 5-phosphate. But again, I didn't mention that here because that's not so important for us. What is important is that ribose 5-phosphate was produced, and this ribose 5-phosphate can be used to produce pyrimidines and purines for DNA and RNA synthesis. And we'll get to that soon. But let's first show how ribose phosphate can be shunted back to glycolysis. The rye bread went further through this key, which we'll talk about soon, and was converted to frog toes. Here we have this upside down frog over here, and here we have the toes. 
and specifically six toes. So six frog toes, or frog toe six. Frog toe six for fructose six, fructose six phosphate. Ribose five phosphate can be converted to fructose six phosphate. And this is through the enzyme transketolase. And we we're reminded of that because in this arrow over here, we see this random key with the train on it. The train key for transketo, transketolase. Again, transketolase converts ribose 5-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. There actually may be another enzyme involved, transaldolase, but again, since this one is not so important, we're not going to mention it here. Fructose 6-phosphate can then go on to participate in glycolysis. Now, there's one thing that I didn't mention over here. The rye bread didn't need to be converted to fructose 6-phosphate. It could have been converted to this pyramid over here with the ring on it. The pyramid for pyrimidine, a pure ring over here, I'm not sure why it's pure, but it's a ring. The pure ring for purine. This reminds us of pyrimidine and purine synthesis. That ribose 5-phosphate can be shunted to produce nucleotides, pyrimidines and purines. And this is another function of the pentose phosphate pathway. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the pentose phosphate pathway. Take care.